All right, so we're out with Mr. Hudson here. Got him on a pressure sensitive collar that will beep and vibrate under pressure. Also has the ability to static, but we have the prong protectors in place right now, so it won't do that. We just want to try to get him to recognize leash pressure even more by adding these things in there. And what helps too, we were working on it inside, is him building a good positive association with the beeping and the vibrating and knowing that it actually stops when he comes back or returns to us. So we're using it more as a good boy come. Good boy. So we're using it more as an interrupt, right? Um, than a consequence. Most of the time when he is pulling, he doesn't even realize it because he's so strong and he and he's so trying to untangle your leg, but there you go. Um because he's so strong and he's so used to it. On a second note here, we, we fixed his leash biting problem pretty easily by replacing it with a metal leash. Right? It just helps to discourage because they don't like that sensation on their teeth. Unlike a normal leash that is softer, like the texture of a lot of toys and rope toys that they'll play with and tear up. So it makes that distinction with him very easily and naturally. Um, but a lot of times people will take the easy solution out, but then not actually work on the problem. We're only doing this now, but we're gonna be in future videos showing you how to leave it and how to drop it. So that way when he does go back, if necessary on a normal lead, that he'll be able to leave it alone. We just now have it set up that we're, we're doing it kind of on, on our terms now, as opposed to uh, struggling and, and fighting with him when he just wants to play. Good boy. He's doing really well, just walking nicely on the lead. Started pulling there just a little bit and he responded right away with the help of the beep too, which is good. And some pups, especially um, those that are not as sensitive to things, they could really use that physical sensation to help with getting their attention and redirecting them. And it doesn't have to be at that point that it's puncturing them or hurting them in any way. It just has to be hard enough to make an impact that, you know, oh, hey, I'm interested in this smell, but hey, I feel this thing that I need to respond to as opposed to just a verbal command that can be recognized, but a lot more easily brushed off or ignored. The additional benefit of this too is that we'll be able to help redirect him earlier if necessary um, across a longer distance because this thing also works without pressure, kind of like a normal e-collar. You can kind of press everything manually too. Good boy. So walking really well, leash is nice and loose. Got a little bit of a scratch there. Mm -hmm. okay, and now before he gets to the leash pressure, I'm gonna try utilizing and practicing his name to redirect him back into that heel like we were practicing before. So you can use use the bathroom first. And it's important to note that I'm not triggering the leash pressure by making like those sudden turns or or tugging on the leash for corrections or anything like that. I want 
him strictly to be the one to activate it because he's pulling past the uh, the boundary leash pressure that we established on the last exercise. And training like this is perfect because if he's not doing anything wrong, he's not getting any repercussions. So it's very fair and balanced, right? He gets to smell the grass, he gets to explore. But so long as he doesn't pull and make things uncomfortable for his handler, then that's when he gets the repercussions, right? Or the corrections. Hudson. Yes, good listen. Good boy. He's doing really well. I think it's only triggered like a handful of times at this point and <laughs> he's uh, walking on a nice loose leash. I'm gonna go ahead and reward him for continuing to stay with me on a heel. And doesn't always have to be on a, on a tight command, but of course um, promoting good behavior and recognizing it when we see it, especially when it's unprompted, can really go a long ways in, in helping your relationship with your pup as well as their own development, right? He doesn't have to wait for a command to do something. He just has learned that automatically if he stays close to us, he gets a good reward. Good boy. <laughs> so he's checking in a lot more for a reward now. And what I'll do eventually to kind of wean off of that a little bit is still marking that behavior when he refocuses back on me and maintains focus. But here's a good example. I'm gonna carry that focus for a while on a good uh, heel walk, good boy. Maybe a few steps and then I'll stop and reward it or keep walking and reward it. So that way we can kind of stretch out the treats, but still reward him for maintaining focus through a long period of time. And because I didn't ask him to stay in that heel, I want him to be able to smell and explore and, and be a puppy and get out his energy and use his nose. Good boy. I'm not gonna correct him for going past me. Um, he didn't sprint past or anything else and uh, uh, didn't trigger any of the leash pressure. So there's no, no need to have any consequence for him. Good boy. Gonna have to restock on some treats later today. He's doing really good though. Good boy. Yeah. We'll do some more practice with just the neighborhood distractions today. And then maybe tomorrow we'll start in more engaging environments like the social environments or parks, things like that. It can be a lot harder for pups to maintain focus and you know, uh, control their excitement and things like that, which usually triggers his, um, his pulling behavior. And once we get a good amount of um, a bond built between me and him and some redirection practice, then we'll start working with him more on his uh, food possession, things like that, because I want him, I want him to be really good at redirecting when I ask first, if necessary, because the, the big key to that is when he's insecure and is about to bark or snap at another pup for getting into his space or trying to go after whatever he's interested in, being able to redirect him first um, and then reward him is gonna be key, as well as unfortunately correcting him for overreacting as well. But we wanna to try to our best to work as much on the positive aspect of him doing the right thing and setting him up for success first 
rather than spending a whole lot of time in punishing him and correcting him for his failures. Which, especially when it comes to resource guarding, it's, it's only natural for him and, it, and to his mind still, unfortunately, it's the right thing to do, right? To kind of protect what he feels is his when another pup or person comes into play. Good boy, good listen. That was good. He did it off of gentle enough leash pressure that it didn't even trigger the beep. I think it's like uh, two pounds of pressure force for the beep, four pounds for vibrate, and then outside of that, it'll be the static. But no, he's been, he's been doing really good. Good boy. I helped to offset the weight of the chain by adding a small bungee as well to the attachment point of the device. So it still gives him a little bit of leeway. Hasn't really needed it though. It's been on a really nice loose leash walk all around the block there. Well, I guess we kind of switched up halfway, but still at least a good block around. Let me do another block or two and then give him a break and switch turns with uh, Mr. Marlowe. I'll go ahead and cut the video here. Here, we'll see if he does anything. Hudson, yes, good boy. Good job, big guy. You're doing so good. Gotta get some more treats too on the next uh, stop by the place. 